We found in our recent survey that a large proportion of people who've taken up film photography in the last five years are choosing to shoot medium format film as well as 35mm. Here's a quick guide which explains a little about this type of film and some demos showing how to load it on a cross section of cameras. Nowadays it is possible to pick up a great quality second-hand medium format camera relatively cheaply. Digital cameras capable of producing the same quality would cost serious money. So medium format photography, once the domain of professionals or very serious amateurs, is now much more accessible to anyone with a passion for film. There is also a fun element to medium format photography with the popular lower budget Holger and Lomo type cameras. These cameras are loved for their fun, quirky and unique images. Medium format film is larger than 35mm but smaller than sheet film. It is often referred to as roll film or 120 roll film. The first 120 film was produced for the Kodak Brownie in 1901 and the 120 refers to their own numbering system and doesn't relate to the size of the film. 120 film comes wound on a spool with a black light height backing paper. The film is 6cm high but unlike 35mm film the exposure width varies depending on the type of camera that you are using. A typical medium format camera will shoot 6x6cm 6 6 square exposures, sometimes referred to as 2 and a quarter. At this size you will get 12 exposures to a roll. Other cameras may shoot 6x4.5, 6x7, 6x9 or another format. These will give you between 8 and 16 shots per roll. The larger the negative, the better the quality and scope for enlargement. Here at Ilford Photo we produce all our films in 120 roll format as well as 35mm cassettes, so there is a great choice to experiment with. Our website, ilfordphoto.com, contains plenty of information on the various types of films, suggestions on their best uses and all the technical information you will ever need to know. If you're not processing them yourself, we can do that for you too. Unlike 35mm film, which is protected by a metal cassette, 120 roll film is only protected by the backing paper. You need to be gentle and not press directly on the film and most importantly, always load in subdued light in the cleanest environment possible to avoid dust or debris getting into your camera. Before you load a film for the first time, read your user guide and familiarise yourself with the camera settings. If you don't have a user guide, they can often be found online. We have tried to demo a range of different types of medium format camera, but they may not be exactly the same as yours. The first camera we will demonstrate is the Holger 120 CFN. Depending on which type of mask you have in the camera, this will shoot either 6x4.5 or 6x6cm exposures. We are setting our camera to 16 as we are using a 6x4.5cm mask. Now remove or slide down the clips from the side of the camera to open the back. Insert your film in the left hand side of the camera and draw out the backing paper. Insert the tapered end into the empty take up spool and wind on. Note that the backing paper is white and states unexposed. Turn the film advance knob a few times making sure you keep the film tight until the arrow on the backing paper is roughly central. Replace the back on the camera and slide the clips back into place. Keep advancing the film past the arrows and circles until the number one appears in the frame counter window. You are now ready to take your pictures. Once you've taken all your shots, turn the advance knob until the film is completely on the take-up spool. You can usually see the end of the film go past in the frame counter window and will feel a difference in tension when the film is released. Remove the film from the camera, taking care to keep it spooled tightly. You will notice that the backing paper is now black, the white exposed label also shows the film name and speed. 
You can write additional processing instructions on this label, for example, if you have pushed the film an extra stop. Tuck under the end of the backing paper and lick and stick it down to keep it light tight. This camera can take either 120 or 220 roll film. It is a 6x7 format which gives you 10 shots on a 120 film. To release the back, push in button and slide release catch. Turn the pressure plate inside the camera to select the correct format, 120 in our case. The window on the back of the camera will show which format you are using. It's also a good idea to insert the tear off end from the film box into the memo clip to remind you what film you have loaded. Press the orange spool release lever and insert your film into the left film chamber. Make sure there is an empty take up spool on the right. When the film is seated correctly in the chamber, push the lower spool stud back in. Check that the one on the take up spool has also been done. Draw out the backing paper and insert into the take up spool. Wind the film advance lever until the arrow on the backing paper lines up with the indicator on the camera and then close the back cover. Continue to wind the film advance lever until it stops and the number one appears in the frame counter window. Adjust the film speed dependent upon the film you are using. You are now ready to shoot your film. When you come to the end of the film after 10 exposures, the shutter will no longer depress. Advance the film until we feel the change in the tension. Advance a couple more times to get the end of the film fully onto the take-up spool. Once you've opened the camera back, remove your film by pressing the orange spool release lever and seal with the label to keep it light tight. This is a popular TLR Lomography camera. It's capable of shooting 6x6 or 6x4.5, so either 12 or 16 shots per roll. On the side of the camera there's a small metal lock built into the film advance wheel which allows you to rewind the film, handy if you want to experiment with double exposures. Make sure the dot in the centre of the advance wheel lines up with the outer marker and is locked into place, otherwise turning the wheel would not advance your film. Open the camera by aligning the dots on the rotating catch. If you have an older model then there will be a clip instead. Inside there are two compartments. Make sure there's an empty film spool in the top one. Pull out the rewind crank and insert your film in the bottom compartment then push the crank back in. When the film is in place, take the backing paper and draw across. Feed the backing paper into the slot on the take up spool and turn carefully to engage film in spool. Once engaged correctly, it should be easy to wind on using the crank. Keep winding until the arrow appears. Now close the back of the camera. We've set our camera to 6x6. Rotate the dark slide so the backing paper is visible through the red viewing window. Now advance the film until the number one appears. Use the dark slide between shots to help prevent light leaks. You can also use the rubber bung as an extra precaution. Finally, rotate the film speed wheel on the side of the camera to match the film you have loaded. Rotating this wheel does not change any settings on the camera, it is just a reminder. This is a Bronica ETRS. Yours may look a little different to ours depending upon which finder you have. We also have a speed grip on ours. For this demo, I'm going to remove the finder as it's easier without it in the way. A great feature of this type of camera is the removable film back. This means if you are planning on taking a lot of shots or even switching formats or films, you could take other preloaded backs out with you. Press this button on the side of the camera to release the back. There are two buttons on the top which you push and slide to open, then lift the film holder out. Before loading the new film, ensure that the empty take-up spool is in the bottom space of the film holder. 
The left hand side of both spool holders are opened by exerting a little pressure from the inside. Load the new film into the top space making sure that you insert the right hand side of the film first. Close the holder on the left locking the film in place. Draw out the leader down over the pressure plate and feed it under the bottom take up spool before inserting the end into the slot. Wind on using the manual film winder on the right hand side until the film is engaged. Then continue to wind until the arrow on the backing paper lines up with the red start mark on the film holder. Fold the winder back in, replace the film holder into the back, close the cover firmly and reattach back to the camera. Wind the film on using the film advance lever until it stops and the exposure counter shows 1. Don't forget to remove the dark slide before taking any shots. After your 15 exposures the shutter won't depress and the winder will move freely. Wind the film on until you feel the tension change. Wind a couple more times as a precaution and reinsert the dark slide before removing the back. I hope you found this video helpful and it will encourage you to experiment with medium format film. If you need any help our website ilfordphoto.com contains lots of useful information. You can also keep in touch via Facebook and Twitter. We can develop and print your films here at Ilford Lab Direct. If you'd like to have a go yourself but don't have a dark room check out localdarkroom.com.